Hello everybody. In this screencast, I'll demonstrate how to create a simple web application using XQuery and XSDB. We'll start with a basic XQuery, then package it up into an application using HTML templating. You'll learn how to build modular applications, which can be deployed into any XSDB database instance using a standard packaging format. To start with, we launch Excite. I already prepared a simple XQuery, which searches through a dataset containing German laws and regulations. This is publicly available data we transformed into the TI format. To demonstrate what this simple query is uh, going to do, we'll click on the button down here, which should open um, our HTML page in a new browser tab. I enter a search term like, for example, Eigentum, which is German for property, and I'll see, I'll get the uh, uh, search results ordered by the law in which they occur. Going back to the XQuery, um, we can see that it mixes HTML and XQuery within a single file. Um, this is okay for, for a basic test, but in the long run, it will lead to, to many problems. Um, in particular, if you have multiple people um, contributing to a project, um, it is bad style to mix up HTML and XQuery, that is application logic like that. We'll thus rewrite our XQuery and put it into an application package. The additional advantage is that this application package can be easily exported and installed on other XSDB instances because XSDB 2.0 defines a common format for application packages to help you write modular and portable applications. We create a new application using Excite's uh, new application wizard. And we leave most of the parameters at a default setting and just fill out the required ones. So first of all, we have to uh, name a target collection, which should always be a relative path. So I'll just use law. Then we have to provide a unique identifier. And uh, I'll use a URL for that, short name and the title. Then I click on done to have my app generated. So as you can see, Excite created a complete um, collection hierarchy for my application. Don't be scared about the number of files in it. Um, for our simple example right now, we actually only need to modify two of them. The first one we want to look at is the index HTML file. As you can see, it already contains some dummy HTML. And to, to see um, what it does, we just run it again. Yeah, so that's HTML page with some dummy stuff on it, and we're going to replace this dummy stuff with our um, search form. But if you look at uh, the HTML again, you'll recognize it's just a, an HTML diff. So where did all the, the rest of the page come from? Well, that's the job of the templating framework. In particular, if you look at the class attribute attached to the div, um, you'll see it has a strange structure. Well, this class attribute is a templating call. We put this templating call into the class attribute because this way it will be by default ignored by a browser or an HTML editor or other tools which might be used by our web designers, okay? So they can work with the HTML without being buffered by XQuery code in it. And what this templating call up here does is, well, it just pulls in the basic page setup from a template page uh, found in templates page.html. We won't look at that, but we are now just going to develop our application. So the first step is to replace the content of this div and copy our search form 
from the old example over to the new one. Well, we just add it here. We need to replace the action because we want the request to go back to index.html and not playground.sql. And we'll also need a place where our search results should appear. So we'll add a div here. Now, how do we connect this HTML page to our application logic? That is our X query code, which should be executed when we open the page or run a query. Again, this is done using the HTML templating. Um, and we can just add our own templating call here. And by default, uh, the generated application setup does already include one uh, X-Gray module for templating functions, which is called app.xql and the prefix is app. So we'll call our template app search, okay? To add the actual um, application logic, we'll open app.xql, which by default resides in the modules subcollection. So we'll open app.xql. As you can see, there's already some dummy function in there. And to make things simple, we're just going to replace this with our own app search function, right? Every templating function needs to have two parameters at least. We won't use them in this example, so you don't really need to understand what they are good for, but you just have to remember that any templating function needs to have at least two parameters um, whose type is required. So to implement the actual functionality, we just copy um, the XGRI code we did here into our templating function. If you look at it, um, you may wonder where we do get the, the variable dollar $query from now. Previously, we read this from a request parameter, but it's much easier using the templating framework. The templating framework is based on convention, so it tries to guess as much as possible from the context. And what we do to get a parameter is we just add it as a function parameter. This parameter might be empty, so we have to add a question mark here. Please also notice that um, the parameter type is taken into account. So if I would write um, dollar $query as x as integer, uh, the templating framework would try to convert it into an integer. But that doesn't make sense here. Okay, so there's another running down there because I forgot to include the TI namespace. So I'll just copy that from here. And I'm also going to include the quick module because that will be required as well. So just paste it here. And then the error disappears and we should be able to save our module. Okay, so this should be sufficient and we'll just try if it works. Okay, so here's our search box. Again, here let's uh, search for Eigentum. And there we go. So the functionality itself hasn't changed, but it already looks prettier. And you now know how to add further pages in this case. Before we finish this screencast, I'd like to show you how to export your app. So you can upload it to a version control system or the like. There are two possibilities. The first is to package the app into an archive and download it. So if we go back to Excite, we can select application, download app. And what we get back is a XAR archive. <clears throat> XAR is the packaging format we use for applications to be installed within XSDB. And we could now take this XAR, pass it on to someone else, and this other person may just upload it using the dashboard. Yeah? So we don't need to do that because 
our app got already installed when we created it. So if you go to the dashboard and do a reload, we'll see a button for our new app down here already. The other possibility to get a copy of your code out of the database is to use the synchronize feature. This is actually quite important and I use it on a daily basis. Whenever I develop something um, for an hour or so, I kind of back up my code by using synchronize to synchronize um, the current application to the file system. <clears throat> the first time you do this, um, it asks you for a target directory, which has to be a directory on your local system where XSDB runs. Okay, so I already choose Joe's uh, users of uh, source law here, and if I click on synchronize, it writes out um, the entire contents of my um, application. Right. The good thing is the next time I click on synchronize, it notices that nothing has changed, so it won't write everything again. It always only writes those files which have actually changed. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening and have a nice day.